Now, let's talk about how you study. In the 21st century, we carry more devices that give us more access to more information than ever before. Unfortunately, this situation tends to encourage a state of constant distraction. Research shows that human attention is limited. When we are multitasking, we may think that we are following several things at once, but we are really just constantly switching our attention from one thing to another, and the quality of that attention suffers dramatically. So, whenever you pursue this coursework, eliminate distractions. In your browser, close all other tabs. Close other open applications. Turn off your other devices, and in particular, mute your phone and put it in a desk drawer or in another room. Seriously, research has found that if we can see our cell phone, even if it's face down and silenced, it distracts us. Giving the coursework your full attention is an important first step, but there's more you can do to maximize the effectiveness of your study time. You should avail yourself of three important psychological effects on human memory. The first is called the testing effect. Traditionally, we tend to think of tests as a way of measuring what we have studied. But believe it or not, taking a test is itself a more effective study technique than only reviewing your notes or rereading the textbook. So I've provided you with a study test for every module. You are required to take each study test at least once before you take the corresponding exit test for a grade. Every study test attempt is risk-free. Your study test score never affects your course grade, and Blackboard never shows me your score. It only indicates to me whether or not you've taken the test at least once. The second effect you can exploit is what psychologists call the spacing effect. Let's start from the axiom that being enrolled as a full-time student is roughly analogous to holding down a full-time job, which typically represents a total time commitment of 40 hours per week. If you're taking a full load of four four-credit courses, dividing those 40 hours by four courses gives 10 hours per week per course, or in the summer, 20 hours per week per course. If you can succeed on less time than that, more power to you, but that is a good baseline for planning. Some people might think, I want long, uninterrupted blocks of time to study, so I will schedule those 10 hours per week as five two-hour blocks, Monday through Friday evenings. That's not bad, but the spacing effect tells us that the more you can distribute your study time, not only throughout the week, but also throughout the day, the better you will retain the information you study. So, instead of five 120-minute sessions with no study over the weekend, you're better off with 85 minutes per day, seven days a week. Better yet, instead of a single 85-minute block every evening, split that time into 40 minutes every morning and 40 minutes every night. Even better would be 25 minutes every morning, 25 minutes every afternoon, and 25 minutes every evening. See what I did there? The total study time is now less than 10 hours per week, but because it's more evenly distributed, those study hours will pay off more directly. Your ultimate goal is to return to the material throughout the day, using flashcards or a flashcard app, listening to repertoire on your mobile device, and so on. The third phenomenon you can use is called the interleaving effect. Simply put, this means you get better results if you mix it up while studying. Instead of working on terms and concepts for 10 straight minutes, and then learning repertoire for 10 straight minutes, and then reviewing the assigned reading for 10 straight minutes, it's better to spend just a few minutes on terms and concepts, and then switch. Listen to repertoire for a few minutes, and then switch. Review your notes for a few minutes, and then switch, and so on. This introduces what psychologists call desirable difficulty. It requires more concentration than studying each domain separately, but 
the extra effort should pay off in better retention and in starting to draw connections among different points of information. Finally, let's think about how you think. This is what psychologists call metacognition. Don't just memorize isolated facts and figures. Instead, always look for ways to connect them. How might you sort portions of the course content into categories? How might you sort the same information into a different set of categories? Different examples may exhibit different surface features, but what are the deep structures by which they resemble each other? A good practical way to move toward deep processing of information is to use the Cornell method of taking notes. Instead of simply filling each page with notes, reserve empty space along the left and bottom of each page. Then, after you have filled the notes portion, pull out key words and concepts to the left margin and write a brief summary of that page at the bottom. This technique of taking notes not only makes it easier to find the most important information when you review your notes, it should also accelerate your deeper understanding and organization of the material. So, to review, online courses can pose special challenges to students who are accustomed to traditional classroom courses. To succeed in this course, you should carefully schedule your time for coursework and stick to that schedule. Make sure you have the right software and always verify that the technology actually does what you want it to do. If it does fail, let me know right away. Take advantage of the online environment to make comments that offer more evidentiary detail and are more carefully organized than off-the-cuff comments in a classroom. Take advantage of study techniques that exploit well-documented psychological effects on human memory. Use the study tests on a daily basis. Distribute your coursework throughout the day and throughout the week. And interleave the different components within each study session. Lastly, think about how you think of the course material. Look for ways to organize the information into categories and look for connections between bits of course content from different modules or even from different units. If you put in the necessary time and apply your energy in the ways I've just outlined, then you should see your efforts pay off in better retention of basic information, better understanding of higher level concepts, and of course, better scores on the various coursework assessments. Ultimately, I hope you can avoid the potential pitfalls of online learning so that you can enjoy all of its convenience and advantages.